All right. All good. All right. So, hi, hi everyone. I'm Brendan, DevRel engineer at Hashgraph, and I'm here to tell you how to build on Hedera. So, before we start, just wanted to show you all the resources that we have available for you for this hackathon. So, if you go to github.com slash Hedera Dev slash Hedera Global Resources, the link is in the eGlobal website for Hedera. Um, you'll be able to find this link. And what we'll be doing today is this one, the Let's Build section. Um, introduction, Hedera Technology and Hedera Ecosystem, that's for you to read on your own time. Please go and explore that if you would like to. So for now, we're going to do this, which is this tutorial over here. So you can get to choose your own adventure and build tokens on Hedera in three different ways. Right? So there is one way, which is to use smart contracts, right? um, and that's EVM compatible. And then you can also use Hedera native service called Hedera token service or HTS. And you can use that to build a token without using any solidity, right? Just JavaScript, Java or Go, take your pick. So if you're a Web2 developer, that's perfect for you. And then finally, the third way is to build it using Hedera. Um, you can use a Hedera token service um, token, and then you can interact with it via Hedera smart contract service. So that's like an interoperability thing. So I just wanted to have a show of hands here. Who here considers them, uh, considers yourself to be a Web2 developer, right, primarily? Okay, and then how about who here considers yourself to be more of a Web3 developer? So more in the EVM side. Okay, all right. So, with that, uh, I'm just choosing which one, which one to do. Because you, you can explore this repo in your own time, and there's like multiple of them. So you can explore all three, and I encourage you to do so. But for now, um, let's do the uh, Hedera token service way, the, na the native one. So the first thing you'll want to do is open this in Gitpod. So you just um, open that in the new tab. It's just a link. And for those of you who've never used Gitpod before, this is basically a cloud devel development environment. It takes about 10 seconds to spin up a fully working environment. So I'm just going to make the font size a little bit bigger so that's easy for you to see. And if you're familiar with Visual Studio Code, right, um, this is VS Code, but it's not an app on your desktop. It's inside the browser, right, and it's all running on a Docker container hosted by Gitpod. So it's really convenient. All the dependencies have been set up for you. So um, just orientation. Here are all your files. This is the code editor area, and this is your terminal. And you'll notice that there are multiple terminals. You can ignore the, all of them, except for this one, which is the main one. Now, what, the first, what, this is, what is running over here on the screen, if you can see this purple line, right? it's a script that's interactively asking you to enter some values to configure your accounts. So what's going to happen is this .n file has some credentials that you need you know, to, to get configured and get going. And you know, it's tedious, so hence the script. So seed phrase, just hit enter for default. And then number of accounts, again, you just want a few. And then for RPC URL, just hit enter. And then for private key, just hit enter, and you'll use the first account that's generated from your seed phrase. Now, just hitting enter, right, super easy. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is copy this EVM um, address, and then hold down Command click, and open up the faucet. Faucet dispenses HBAR, which is the cryptocurrency in Hedera, into the accounts that you select. So let's paste that address, receive your testnet tokens, and select I'm not a robot, and then confirm transaction. And within a couple of seconds, you should see successfully sent. So once you've got this, you can close the faucet, and you can come back here to the terminal, and then hit enter. And it'll just basically check the account, whether it exists, whether it's been funded, and create a couple of other ones. Now, once you've done this, look at that. I'm going to type Y for yes and hit enter. And you'll see the .n file update with all the credentials. And you know it's just super easy. And then also, it runs RPC Relay off the back of that. So if you're doing smart contracts, it's all set up for you. Now, what I just did would take approximately maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes for a first-time Hedera developer. We just did it in about two minutes. Cool. So now let's build something. So what do we pick this now? Were we going to do uh, the smart contract token or the HTS native token? Which one do we pick? Smart contract? Smart contract? I, okay. Raise, raise your hands. Who wants to do smart contract version? Okay. That's the majority. Okay. Let's, let's go with that. So the first thing we're going to do is open up token HSCS, right? 
and we've got a Solidity file that I've already written, right? So this is not a Solidity tutorial, right? So this is a standard ERC20 smart contract, right, with the code. I've just copied it from a minimal implementation. It's not Open Zeppelin, but it's functional. And uh, what we're going to do is compile that. So I'm going to do CD into token HSCS. Right, so now we've navigated into this directory, and I'm going to do npm run to remind myself what the commands are. So npm run compile smart contract that just runs solcjs, and you'll notice that I've got a bunch of new files here, right? And you'll see that I've got the abi file, and I've also got the .bin file. So this is the EVM bytecode, same EVM bytecode that you would get in Ethereum or any other Ethereum L2 and this is the ABI which defines the interface. We don't really need that, just, just so you know that it's the exact same thing, it's the same Sol C as what anyone else would use um, in any uh, Ethereum or EVM compatible project. So now let's run this script over here, so script token HSCS, right? And you notice here that I'm not using the Hedera um, SDK, right? This thing here is VM. Right, VM is a, it's like Ethos.js or Web3.js, it's just another library that talks JSON RPC. And um, what, what we want to do is run this file. So I'm going to do dot slash script and then hit tab to autocomplete, run that file. Okay, so this has a script and it's running the script and it's pausing at every, you know, interesting point. So if I hit command click and I'll jump to that part, so it says, okay, I'm checking if the Solidity smart contract exists. So I just hit enter and I'll run the next thing. Now it's loading up the EVM bytecode and you can see the code for that. So the reason why I do this is so that it's easy to follow along so you can track exactly which lines of code is doing, uh, doing what exactly, right? So this is more of a learning thing. You don't actually need to have the pauses if you don't want to, right? So we're loading up EVM bytecode Okay, so now we're checking whether the JSON RPC endpoint actually is running, right? Which is actually running over here, right? Uh, this is one of the tabs that in the terminal that you don't need to take a look at necessarily, but this checks that it's actually running. So it says, okay, it's live because I was able to get a block number and I was able to query the balance. So all good. Now I'm going to do the first thing where it's actually significant. I'm going to deploy the ABI, uh, sorry, the EVM bytecode, right? So. This bytecode that's over here, this large amount of hexadecimals, right, that's going to go onto the Hedera network. Now this transaction is a little bit heavy. We're expecting it to take maybe, um, yeah, maybe a couple of seconds. There you go. And what you'll see here is you'll have a deployed address, right? So let's go and hold down command and click on that. And what we have here is Hashcan, right? Which if you're familiar with Etherscan is something very similar, but it's just a Hedera version of it. So we've got a smart contract here and we can see it's bytecode, not very useful, just good to know that it's there. So then we go back here, next step is to verify the smart contract, right? So this uses Sourceify um, as its underlying API in case you are familiar with that. I'm just gonna hit enter and it has verified. So it says I've got a verification status of perfect, which is what I expected. So the next thing I'm gonna do is submit the EVM transaction to transfer token balance. But before I do that, I wanted to come back to Hashcan and refresh the same page, the same URL. And this time we see that we've got the bytecode, but now we've also got the source code, right? So whatever I have inside my Solidity file over here, right? that same contents are over here, and not only that, we have the ABI. And this ABI is interactive, so you can just fill in whatever values and run the functions that you want. Um, quite similar to Etherscan, just a different um, format in the UI. Okay, so now let's, tr um, let's transfer some token balance, right? So this is, um, you'll see here, client.write contract. We're interacting with this uh, smart contract that we have just deployed, which is, happens to be the ERC20 token. Hit enter and it runs this uh, bit of code. And after a couple of seconds or so, we get a transaction and we can see over here, let's open up that Hashcan URL in a new tab, and we can see that there has been a token transfer that has resulted, right? Uh, and the way we know that is that we have a transaction log with shows you transfer, signature hash from to an amount. Yeah, same, pretty much same thing as Etherscan. Okay, so now we're gonna query the token balance, right? So, so far we've dealt with transactions, but RPC, you can also just use it as a read um, method. So the code to do it is identical to how you do it in any other EVM chain. 
right? So you do client or read contract. This is a VM function call, and we're just calling the balance off function. And let's do that, and we get a result instantly. So 100 is the balance. Um, N is just JavaScript notation for big integer because human 256 is bigger than uh, what is it? Two to the power 53, which is the max allowed in JavaScript. So hence big number. So you can ignore the N. Basically, it's just 100 units as expected. Okay, so one interesting thing that I'd like to point out is that this um, thing is designed as a learning experience. So what it does is every time we go to one of these purple lines um, over here, not only does it um, pause for your learning ability, right? it also tracks when that gets done. Right? So when it gets tracked, so then you know how long it takes you to do it. So let's take a look at the summary metrics. Right? Over here, we have whether you've completed a task, and this one is interesting. Right? Let me just make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. Um, time to first task completion. So this is time to hello world. Right? So it took a total of seven minutes and 20 seconds, including my time spent explaining things. Right? Um, and time to, um, I, I would say that actually includes the time taken to do the setup script and everything else, right? Um, if you just want the task itself, just the, the HSCS token deployment, that took us three minutes and 30 seconds, right? So what I want to point out here is that, you know, on Hedera A, it's EVM compatible. You can use VM, you can use JSON RPC, you can use, you know, um, the same Solidity smart contracts, the same Solidity compiler, everything just works out of the box. And everything, all your skill sets that you have as an Ethereum developer or any other EVM chain developer uh, development, you can just bring it across. The second thing I want to point out is that it's actually pretty fast, right? So if you use this tutorial, right, you can actually get productive uh, building a token in you know under five minutes um, and including setup about under 10 minutes so hope you build on Hedera and I hope you also um, try this tutorial and if you if you thought that that was easy right you can try out the Hedera token service one which is this directory over here right um, this one does native tokens I don't have time to go through it right um, but it's a pretty similar flow right and it's actually even easier than doing it using Solidity smart contracts Finally, there's also, this is more advanced, right? Token interoperability. So this is one where you do a Hedera native token and then you interact with it via JSON RPC. So you're kind of mixing or interoperating between the EVM world and the Hedera native world, right? And I think that's uh, pretty fun as well. Uh, it's, it's a bit advanced, uh, but you know, uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite fun when you understand what's going on under the hood. All right. Um, I will end the live demo here. Um, I strongly encourage you to all check it out and try it all three of them. Um, you'll find me at the booth the whole of today and tomorrow, so you will be able to ask me any questions if you want about Hedera development. And I'll also just highlight that we have this other repo, right, which I've uh, got on the screen now with all the other resources. Um, what we just covered here is the Let's Build section. So please have a read of the others if you want to have a more general knowledge about what Hedera does. Okay, I think we have time for questions. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Well, while you're thinking of some questions, what I might do is I might show you the Hedera native token, and you know, if we run out of time, then you know, so be it. <laughs> All right, let's do some. Let, let's have some fun. All right, cd dot dot slash token um, hts. All right, and then I'll run the script. So this time I'm just going to run through it with less explanations, right? Um, so this one over here, you'll notice that we're not using VM, we're using the Hedera SDK. Now this is the NPM or JavaScript version, right? It's also available in Java and Go, right? So you've got three different, so whatever flavor of language that you are familiar with, you can use it. Right? and you don't have to learn Solidity. So this, this token that I'm about to deploy does not use Solidity. Right? So let's do this. I'm going to configure a new HDS token. So remember all that Solidity code? Right? This is the equivalent JavaScript code that I'm just scrolling across in the screen. That's literally all there is. That gives you a fungible token, like from here to here. Right? That's all you need. Yeah. OK, so let's run that. And then I'm going to submit the transaction. And then we will see that we have a token, right? Now, you'll notice that this token is not a smart contract. It is a Hedera native token, so it behaves slightly differently, but you can still see it on Hashcan. Now, 
Um, we can also do token association, which is something that is uh, inherent to Hedera. I'm not going to explain it because in lack of time. And then we'll submit that transaction. And then now we're ready to do a transfer, right? So in Hedera, you need to do association before transfers. It's like an opt-in system, um, kind of like a, similar to the allowance system in ERC-20. So let's configure a token transfer. Let's um, then submit that transaction. And what that does is it transfers the token from one account to the other. And you can see the transaction for that. Um, since this one is a Hedera native token, it d renders differently. So you can see an additional section here called token transfers. And you can see that um, you know, from this account to that account. Um, and then let's take a look at the summary metrics. So we can see here that this time we've completed two of the three tasks that are available here, right? And the total time that we've taken for everything so far is apparently 12 minutes and 39 seconds, right? So that's not bad. We have deployed a, and interacted with a token on a smart contract service, and we've also done it on the native Hedera token service, and the entire thing was done in under 15 minutes, including configuration, installing prerequisites and everything. So yeah, developer experience, productivity, that's really important to us, and you know, I hope that you enjoy working with this repo. All right, so we've got two demos. I was only expecting to do one. Um, now, do we have more questions? Yes. Other toolkits for the dApps. What's an example of a toolkit? Scaffold S, like Scaffold ETH from Austin Griffith. Um, it's compatible in this. Yeah, it's compatible in the sense that you're using, uh, let, let's say, VM or Ethers.js, right? So that would work out of the box. But in terms of like whether it works with, I think it, be I believe it uses React or, or yeah. So that stuff is sort of secondary. It doesn't really matter what you use. So in theory, it, there's, there's no reason why it couldn't work. It's just that you have to figure out how to sort of join them together. Yeah. Ah, okay, I get, I get where you're going with this. Okay, so that is where interoperability comes in. So if you want to have an Ethereum tool or framework and work with the Hedera native tokens, that is possible, right? So the first thing is you, I'm assuming that you're gonna be using an EVM compatible wallet, right? Like MetaMask, for example, right? And that operates entirely using uh, EVM addresses, etc. So every Hedera native token has an alias as an EVM address and you can just interact with that. Then you can use the code that you find inside of here, right? And you can, you'll notice this, this actually interacts with the Hedera native token, but it doesn't do so via the Hedera SDK. It's actually using VM. Right, so this would be exactly what you're asking about. Yeah, so you're you're looking at the more advanced thing, um, but you know, I'm prepared. <laughs> yeah, just don't have time to demo it today. Cool. Any other questions? All good. Okay. So um, if you do think of more questions, or maybe you're just a bit shy, um, you can come and find me at the booth, um, the Hedera booth in the main hall. Yeah. Is there a, uh, I remember, I think when you guys first came out, you were pretty much like private blockchain, not uh, open in public. Has that changed right now? Right. Okay. So it has an interesting uh, history in the sense that when it launched, right, the white paper was about Hashgraph, which is just a consensus algorithm in and of itself without a blockchain attached to it. So that's Hashgraph. And then they added Hedera as a blockchain application, which uses you know, uh, Hashgraph is a consensus algorithm. So maybe that's what you're referring to. And yes, you can use Hashgraph for both private purposes or a public blockchain, which is what Hedera is. So it's more similar to a, a fabric, uh, hyperledger? I wouldn't say, yeah. Uh, yes and no, it's a bit nuanced, but yes. Right now it's only public, but yes, it could be private in the future. In fact, there are some projects that are trying to do that. But yeah, watch the space. Yes. Last one. Sorry? I do not believe so, no. No. I... Okay, so this thing over here, Hashcan, right, 
um, is a UI representation of a mirror, something called a mirror node API, which is our own, like, it's a specific kind of index service, if you like. So it's like a web two REST API style way of querying the data that's on here. So you can think of Hashcan as a UI wrapper around that API. Yes. Um, you, you would be able to see it like here, for example, but it wouldn't have those specific kind of queries that I think you are talking about. No. Yep. Okay. I, I think we are out of time. So if you have more questions, come and find me at the booth.